Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas to you all today as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's great to have you all here with us. Thank you for joining us here at Trinity Lutheran Church for our Full Camp Regional Ministry Christmas Day Worship. Uh, today our worship is found in this bulletin that was handed to you as you walked in the front door. Uh, all the songs are in the hymnal that is in front of you in the pew. Uh, so uh, just look at that number and uh, put it in the hymnal and we'll be singing along just great. Uh, basically all of your responses, all of the readings in are found in the bulletin. So uh, just please keep track of where we are in there. And then when we get to the, uh, the communion liturgy, uh, the communion liturgy is all found in there. We will be singing the parts that are sung. Uh, so if, if you're not real sure how to sing it or what parts are sung and what parts aren't sung, uh, turn to page 208 in your hymnal on that book. We'll just be using the order of divine service setting four and its communion, uh, and its communion liturgy. Uh, so uh, as we begin our worship today, uh, we celebrate the Christ child's birth, like I said, with our opening hymn, hymn number 379. God's blessings on your Christmas birthday.
Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God, who has shown us such grace and truth in his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, beseeching him to grant us forgiveness. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have not appreciated the grace you have poured out upon us through the virgin's life, death, and resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we have
thousand some years ago is anything but the king. Is anything but ordinary. It is meant to bring comfort into your life. To bring the comfort and the good news, not just of something great that has happened to your life, but something awesome and amazing that has happened to the lives of all people. That is why Isaiah says, how beautiful are the feet of the, of the one who brings good news. Even the feet of the one who brings good news is beautiful because the good news we receive from Christ himself in the manger is that God reigns over us, over our flaws, and over our lives. <coughs> We continue with the hymn of praise, hymn number 383. <laughs>
Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Because when you hear of something secondhand, you can't really trust it. In the courts, they have a, they have a word for that. They call that hearsay. You can't say, you can't testify to things you just heard about it because you didn't witness it. And so earlier we heard from Isaiah that blood, the beautiful are the feet of the one who brings good news. And yet we wonder who brings that good news. What is that good news? Because if we hear that good news secondhand, can we truly trust it? That ultimately is one of the most beautiful aspects of Christmas. That God sends the one who not only can tell the news, but sends the one who is the news, who is the gospel. He sends his own dear son. And while the Old Testament, Old Testament prophets certainly pointed towards Christ, all the Old Testament narrative pointed towards the coming kingdom and reign of God, when Christ was born, he received he who is the good news. And so we can trust this message that we have received because we have received it from Christ himself. We have received it from the Son himself. We take comfort. This is the truth. That by Christ who has not only told us these things, he is these things, and also now in our hearts he works faith to believe these things. Son himself, the Son of the Father of all things, comes and testifies to us that we are forgiven, that we are saved, that we have the gospel, the good news. These words are trustworthy. These words are real. So we do not worry, but take comfort because they come from the Son of God himself. Be assured that you are forgiven. You are redeemed because the Son of God has said so. Amen. We continue by singing hymn number 384. Thank you.
He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. In a rather mysterious reading from John, we hear about the Word made flesh. We've heard today about our forgiveness forgiveness given to us by the Son, and today we see in John the true nature of who this Son is. This Son is not someone who God decided to conjure up. This Son is the Word. If you go back to Genesis chapter 1, you watch God create all things. Well, how does God do it with a hammer and nails? No. He does it with a word. Let it be. And it was. And so that word that exited the Father's mouth, which created us, created the ground we're standing on, created the human beings that we are, the animals that we see, the plants and the fruits, that word which created everything entered creation on that first Christmas. It became a part of its creation. The very vocal bowls that God spoke now in human flesh. In the person of Jesus Christ, born of the Virgin Mary. wondrous sight indeed for us, a, a, a thing that, that we can't comprehend of why God would do this. Why would God send his dear son, the one through whom he created everything, into that creation to die for it? Therein lies the grace, mercy, and peace of God. God saw us in our frail human condition, saw us as the sinners that we are, and that powerful word, the very Son, He sacrificed to save the creation He made. That is the good news that the beautiful feet bring to us. Not a good news of be happy, not a good news of be merry, but a good news of you are saved. You are redeemed by the Son of God, redeemed by the one who is the Word of God. So as you come to Christmas worship this morning, as you come to Sunday worship or Saturday night worship or whatever, that word that is spoken, that word that penetrates your heart, that word that changes your life from being dead to being alive, from being broken to being whole, that word is the Son of God. And here today we see, we touch, and we taste the Son of God. 
God in his holy communion. This is indeed the word become flesh, the word become blood. This is the miracle of Christ. That just as he came to us on that first Christmas day, he comes to us this Christmas day. In his body and blood, in with and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. May this Christmas message of the word become flesh, of the Son who came to redeem you, and the beautiful news of our God reigns be with you now and always knowing that you and God are in a perfect relationship all because of his son taking on flesh into a creation he has created and then dying for it and then ultimately rising again so that death has no hold over us we live now forever because of this word made flesh. Amen. Please rise. We take a moment now to join together in the confession of our common Christian faith using the word of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one
sing our next hymn.
We commend all for whom we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, that of your mercy you will strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives 